Someone who is constantly thinking, is this going to be good? Is this going to be bad? I have to choose what I put into my body, what I put into my mind, what I put into my soul. And I know right now, your most, most important concern is, what about my kids? What about my kids? Because my kids don't seem to even care about the Catholic Church anymore. I mean, honestly, there are some people who aren't even paying attention to what I'm saying. Because they choose to think that I, as a priest, have nothing to say. And you know what? I kind of felt the same way as a kid. I don't know if you realize this, but when I was a kid, I was kind of obnoxious. I know that's hard to believe. <laughs> but I didn't like going to church. Anyone here think that church is boring? <laughs> okay, there's like a child that was raising their hand. You know what? I'm going to be hearing a lot of confessions at the end of this talk. I thought church was so boring as a kid growing up. I looked at my mom one day, I think I was like 10 or maybe even 8, and I said, I am going. My mom looked at me and she said, you picked the right place to die. <laughs> I remember leaving church so angry, so angry, that I looked at my dad and I said, that priest is so boring. And my dad said, hey Leo, come here. He brought me to the priest and he said, Leo, tell father what you just told me. <laughs> That's like child abuse. <laughs> How dare my dad make me tell the truth to a priest? Do you hear that? We don't want to do it. And so I looked at the priest and I said, Father, I told my dad that I didn't fully understand your homily. <laughs> not what you said. Tell father what you said. Fine, fine. I said that you were boring. And the man turned white. Which is surprising because he was already super white. Puti. <laughs> like, I, puti is the word in it, you know. He was, he was like, putiissimo. I mean, he was really white. And, uh, and, and he turned white, and I remember what he said to me. He said, I'm sorry I didn't know. This is very key. You know, honestly, I don't think that the church exists to make you feel miserable on Sunday for an hour. I know that. I don't think the priest is up there talking to make you feel sleepy. I don't think that's the case. I don't honestly think we fully know what you're going through. So what I want to do is give you a definition of boring. Because you choose what kind of person you're going to be. Are you going to be a boring superhero? Are you going to be a boring villain? Or are you going to be a boring, boring victim? It's up to you. But let me give you a definition of boring so that hopefully you will never be bored again. Boring can be defined as Answering a question that no one was asking. <laughs> Think about that. Answering a question that no one was asking about. So if I'm up here talking about something that you didn't ask, then I would be boring. So you know what the priest did? He called my house like a few days later and the phone rang. And my mom had to give me the phone attached to a cord. Do you all remember that? If you remember that, you're old. <laughs> so, like, this, literally one of the kids is like, I don't understand that joke, Father. <laughs> At one point, never mind. But the priest called me and he said, Leo, I would like to know if you can come to my office 
and bring your mom and dad with you on Friday. And I thought I was getting kicked out of the Catholic Church. <laughs> and I was so excited for Friday. I was so excited to go. And you know what he did? He invited me to his office with my mom and dad. He read the readings for the next Sunday. And then he asked me what I thought of those readings. Basically, he was asking my consultation. <laughs> Never paid me, but he asked my consultation. And can I tell you something? The following Sunday, I actually showed up excited for church. Because I wanted to hear what this man had to say. And can I tell you something? He, he was still kind of boring. <laughs> can speak like, you know, great orators. But what he had to say made sense. And why? Because I was a part of that process. I think one of the big struggles we have in our Catholic Church is that your kids are showing up to Mass not asking any questions. You know, I told the story last night that a mother came up to me and she said, Father Leo, my kid don't get nothing out of that church, and he don't eat broccoli. Which was very serious, so I asked her, how do you prepare your broccoli? And when she explained, as I said last night, the woman boiled her broccoli. I know, makes the whole house smell like fart. I said it, I said it. You know, I mean, the magical fruit smell. It's disgusting. So I gave her a recipe. The kid now eats my broccoli, and he said that it tastes like green chicken nuggets. Here's the recipe. Turn your oven on to 450 degrees. Boil your broccoli for just two minutes until it turns bright green. Take it out, dry it completely. Then add olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic powder, Parmesan cheese, and Italian seasoned bread crumbs. Mix it all together, throw it in your oven for only 10 minutes. Comes out green chicken nuggets. You're welcome. Thank you. But the biggest problem, the biggest problem is that this kid wasn't being fed by the Catholic Church. I have traveled this world giving talks, and the one thing I hear is, I don't feel like the Catholic Church feeds me. That kid wasn't getting anything out of the Catholic Church for three reasons, and I will explain. One, I will admit, as priests, as church, we gotta do a better job of feeding our kids with the big, deep stuff of the church. There are huge concepts that we need to make more bite-sizable. And that's why we have things like children's liturgy. That's why we have things like coffee and donut Sunday. That's why we have things like breakfasts like this, where I'm simply taking big concepts and making it bite-sizable. Interestingly enough, you know what the rest of the world is doing? They are taking big concepts like human sexuality and gender, and we are shoving these big concepts in children's throats, and guess what they are doing? They are eating it up, but also getting them sick. We have to do a better job of taking big concepts and making it bite-sizable. If you want to take a look right now, for the most part, your kids are actually paying attention. Check it out. Like, this little baby was actually looking at me. <laughs> this little kid is looking at me. Little girl looking at me. Why? Why? Because I'm making sure that the sour, bitter, salty truth, I'm making it bite-sizable and I'm adding a little sweet vinaigrette on top of it. 
the recipe for the vinaigrette is available where fine books are sold, okay? <laughs> I'm taking hard concepts and I'm throwing in little jokes every now and then. I'm talking about things that they are aware of, superheroes. I said the word identity, got all the teenagers puckered up and listening. <laughs> you see, I'm just throwing out small <laughs> concepts, but hopefully trying to make it manageable and bite-sizable, yes. We as the church have a better job to make faith more bite-sizable. But guess what? It's not my job! <laughs>